Welcome to another episode of Heard Online, a series on investigative sleep coaching where we take a critical look at things that we find on the World Wide Web and we determine if what we find is something that is helpful if you have trouble sleeping or not that helpful. And today we have found potentially the most insanely heartbreaking thing I ever saw. And, you know, so many things have, have made me think, oh my gosh, this is this is the most insane thing I ever saw, the, the most crazy thing I ever heard of. But sadly, you know, th that never stops. There's always something to top what I heard before. And I say insanely heartbreaking because on one thing, I can't believe what I'm reading. And it's kind of like just almost comical. But on the other hand, it's sad because I know where this will lead. And I, I want to thank Adam for tipping me out about uh, about Andrew Huberman, uh, who's, uh, you know, and we're going to take a look at a video from his YouTube channel in a second. Uh, so yeah, actually, without further ado, let's jump in and uh, we're going to see what uh, Andrew has to say. Uh, I'm going to share my thoughts on it and we're going to look at the transcript. And in fact, I sort of uh, regret that I didn't record myself as I was looking through the transcript because I just could not believe what I was seeing. But anyways, let's take a look uh, and let's uh, let uh, Dr. Huberman uh, introduce himself. I'm Andrew Huberman, and I'm a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine. Today, we're talking all about sleep. So just a quick comment there. Uh, uh, Dr. Huberman introduced himself as a professor. And of course, that is because that automatically to a lot of people, uh, you know, makes him look like an authority, like there's somebody like we should trust. And, you know, not to stay too long on this, but I think, you know, we have gone, we are in a, to a large degree, uh, we look to scientists for guidance and support. And, and that comes from a place of like a lot of amazing things have happened in universities, you know, from, from the scientific approach to things. But, you know, sleep and our emotional, uh, you know, system, it doesn't lend itself so well to, the, you know, the, the critical, you know, scientific approach. It leads to a lot of struggle. So, uh, you know, just want to put that out there that I think in society we are a little bit e easily tricked into um, looking for the answers in the wrong places. But anyways, just a, just a comment on that. And how to optimize your sleep. This is a topic we've covered previously on this podcast in the episode called Master Your Sleep. And yeah, just a little bit on the, on the you know, immediately when you see the wording here and the language, it's, you can see that this is very tricky because sleep is a passive process. It is just like breathing or thinking. It happens by itself. But when we try to force sleep to happen, we get real struggle sleeping. And when you talk about optimizing, mastering your sleep, you, you can see automatic, this is going to lead to effort. This is going to lead to struggle. This is going to lead to insomnia, which is like you can already sense that this is quite tricky. But at least let's keep going. However, since the airing of that episode, there's been some terrific new science to come out. I've also received thousands, yes, literally thousands of questions related to the specific protocols covered in that episode, as well as in the episode on jet lag and shift work. And while today's episode is... So I want to comment right, right off the bat here that I, I reviewed, I won't, I won't say I reviewed the entire transcript, but I went through a great deal of it. And I don't know what terrific new research he's, he's, uh, he's talking about there. There's really like what he talks about in terms of optimizing sleep is things that we've heard over and over and over and over and over again. It's about like adenosine and coffee. It's about like temperature. It's about timing of sleep. It's about sleep hygiene. It's about light. So I really don't know what he's talking about there, but I, I believe that he's gotten literally thousands of questions and who are writing the, those questions? Is it people who are sleeping, you know, well, and just want to optimize their sleep, sleep a little bit? A little bit better. I bet that 95% of those questions come from people who have insomnia, who know it, like I have insomnia and I need help, or somebody who like um, don't understand that they have insomnia. They're like thinking like, I gotta get this right. I can't optimize my sleep. I'm getting. They don't understand that they they actually have insomnia. This is a struggle to achieve sleep. There is a fear of not sleeping well or not sleeping there. So uh, you know, just pointing out that I'm not surprised at all that thousands of people uh, have reached out to him. So. Uh, you know, 
sadly, in my opinion, I don't think they're, they're getting what they're looking for, but let's keep going. Not specifically about jet lag and shift work. We are going to cover tools that will allow you to shift your schedule if you need to for work or travel. And we will also cover tools that will allow you to fall back asleep if you happen to wake up in the middle of the night, or if you get a poor night's sleep, how to actually recover from that poor night's sleep more quickly. And yes, indeed, even replace sleep that you've lost. So today's episode is going to be filled with practical tools. We will touch on some of the underlying science, but it's really designed to be a practical toolkit for optimizing your sleep depending on your specific sleep needs. Various times throughout today's episode, I will refer to studies that form the backbone of the tools that I'll be describing. But whereas most of the podcast episodes here tend to be deep scientific mechanism and then tools, scientific mechanism, then tools, today I'm mainly going to focus on the practical tools that anyone, indeed all people I believe should use in order. And, and here, you know, when I saw this, I thought, okay, firstly, I've gone through a, a quite a bit of the transcript and I've, I haven't seen one single reference. And I may be wrong, but I haven't seen a single reference to a scientific study. Uh, but what I really want to point out here was that I think what, what Dr. Hoover is saying here is like a, a, a way of, you know, it, it's, a, it's a roundabout way of saying like there is no evidence, you know, because, you know, instead of saying like, okay, uh, there is actually no like basic fundamental mechanism that can explain the, the toolkit I'm going to propose. I mean, it's easier to say, uh, well, we don't really have time to look at the underlying uh, mechanisms, so we're just going to focus on the practical tools, right? Uh, I thought that was, uh, you know, quite, quite, quite interesting uh, to hear that said. But you know, I, as you can imagine, we could go, we could do like a have a, you know, <laughs> this could be like a four-hour episode where I just like listen to a little bit and then I comment on it. But what I will share with you was really, really in the transcripts here. And uh, it may not be easy for you to see it because of the screen size, but I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna read some of it to, to. So, firstly, it starts by talking about, of course, he mentions Matt Walker and the book Why We Sleep, which we have seen is so problematic and that has been debunked. Uh, the first chapter has been like completely, uh, you know, um, yeah, debunked in my opinion. There's so many errors in that first chapter of the book that Alex A. Guzzi has shown us. So, you know, just putting that out there. And then he goes to say, like, uh, you know, uh, he's, uh, he's asking the question, why should everybody optimize their sleep? Well, he says sleep is the foundation of mental health, physical health, performance, cognitive performance, et cetera. It controls things like your immune system. And that's, I mean, <laughs> that's so unscientific. How can you say that sleep controls the immune system without any form of, like, reference to any type of data? And it just baffles me that somebody can, can just go, just just say that without without blinking. And by the way, something else I thought about as I was watching this was that we know that the struggle with sleep is deeply emotional. It it is it is a spiritual battle. You know, it's it's like not understanding ourselves. We have this invisible enemy that we're fighting, in, and it, it, it's a very emotional thing. And then to see someone uh, like Dr. Huber in here talk about sleep without without really showing any emotion as it was like, you know, this is how a car works and this is how we fix a car. That, that also is very, very tricky. You know, it, it leads people in the completely wrong direction, in my opinion, you know, it, instead of looking inside, looking at our thoughts, feelings, how we react and how we think about things, we think of it as like, okay, this is something that needs to be fixed just like a car. Very, very tricky. Anyways, he goes on to see that it controls wound healing, control healthcare, health, health appearance, whether you think clearly or not, like this is this is just putting an incredible amount of pressure on sleep. And now you can wonder, like, why why is somebody doing this? Like, is it you know, it, it, does he really just want to help people? Does he just not understand sleep? And he wants to you know, but he has good intentions. This is where I started to getting really shocked. It was when I looked at the transcript and I saw around um, yeah here around three minutes he's going to say that uh, he's pleased to announce that the Huberman Lab podcast is now partnered with Momentus Supplements. Huh? We partner with Momentus for several important reasons. Firstly, they ship internationally because we know that many of you are located in, uh, outside the United States. Secondly, the, the quality of their supplements is second to none. Thirdly, we emphasize. So you can see that. Uh -huh. Then you're like, aha, uh -huh. okay, now I see. I, now I see why this, this podcast exists. Now I see why he's out there you know, exploiting 
his position as a professor is to sell supplements, you know, and this made me think like there's have has nothing really improved over the last like 400 years or like, I don't know, hundreds of years when, you know, I just happened to be reading this book about uh, uh, what's the name? John D. Rockefeller and his and his dad was this like uh, country, like this country doctor, like self styled doctor who sold these like basically snake oil salesman who sold this this oil and said it will help everything. And I'm like, it's basically the same thing. It's basically somebody who has no insight and has this like intent of just you know, I, I, yeah. I, I'm getting too too, too too excited about this, but. This, this, this made me really think, okay, now I see where this is going. And then, you know, so, so in this episode, this was, this, this was, uh, you know, uh, there's a partnership with a supplement company. He talks about that a lot. He talks about how you can go to uh, livemomentus.com slash Huberman to see those supplements. And, um, and then he talked about this, his previous podcast He's is going like, okay, now I'd like to thank the sponsors. Uh, 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 our, fir our first sponsor was Inside Tracker. Inside Tracker is a personalized nutrition platform that analyzes data from your blood and DNA to help you better meet your health goals. And you know, I all I all I talk about is sleep here, but this is you know just like supplements is a rabbit hole. This is another rabbit hole of trying to figure out why your sleep isn't optimized by doing some DNA tests and lab tests. You know. And I think there was even more. Uh, he talks about a web portal we can go and here, like you get 20% off any inside tracker plan using like, you know, a Huberman's like thing here. And he says, today's episode is also brought to us by Eight Sleep. Eight, Eight Sleep makes smart mattresses. So like within the first minutes, you know, he's talked about supplements, some DNA tests, mattresses. And this is like, oh my goodness, what's happening? Like this is... Honestly, this is so heartbreaking, and um, you know, I, I know I'm I'm sort of just like reacting to 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 this this episode. And Adam may have wanted more of a like, uh, you know, me commenting on 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 the, uh, the 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 methods that the Huberman goes over in terms of like optimizing your sleep. But I will just say this: that um, yeah, of course, um, there are other things than gas and brake. So gas and brake model is what. I teach here in terms of like uh, helping anyone uh, uh, sleep easier when they had a struggle with, with insomnia. So basically, uh, gas is like our sleep drive, which is, you know, uh, like hunger. Like the longer we go without sleep, the sleeper we become. So we have more of a sleep drive. That's that's the gas in our sleep system. And break is hyperarousal. Uh, our brains are designed to not let us sleep when we are in danger. So hyperarousal is what keeps us from sleeping when there is some danger, real or perceived uh, danger, right? And, and then you can wonder, okay, so how about light and the timing of when we wake up and like, you know, melatonin levels and like, you know, natural light, like, doesn't that play any role whatsoever? Maybe, maybe a little bit, you know, maybe um, if we have a more bright light one day, we sleep like one minute more or one minute less or, you know, other things can have some impact on our sleep, surely, but compared to like the, the gas and break there, nothing else really matters, right? If we're sleepy and we're not trying to sleep, we're not worried about sleep, we're not trying to achieve anything, sleep will just happen by itself and we'll feel refreshed and it'll be fine, you know? So uh, th that is really the only answer I have to this. And, and what he talks about, about like optimizing sleep, to me, it's really, really tricky. And actually, like now I was about to, you know, conclude there, but I, there was one thing more I want to show you, which was the comments. You know, comments are always you know, so enlightening. And I saw this, uh, this one comment here from Myra. Let, let's take a look at that together. Myra says, thanks so much for covering these uh, things again and offering new insight. It's truly life changing, which is like, so, so interesting to me. I mean, on one hand, I'm like, who might to, to, to say what's life changing or not. I'm glad this was life, life changing for Myra. But then she goes on to say, I would love to hear an episode specifically about clinically diagnosed insomnia, the causes, any new studies, and possible cures if such things exist. Which so we can already see here in the beginning of the comment that Myra's probably still struggling, right? And she's looking for the cure, doubting that it even exists. Like, what kind of situation is that? That's so sad when you don't even think 
there could be a cure, right? She says, I applied your behavioral sleep protocols in the past, which I found through trial and error, and maintained them with the good fortune of a private roof in your city. I had a few bliss blissfully rested years using the tools you've now explained to us so well, but now I don't have, have safe outdoor access in the mornings, and I do have Lyme disease, which has made the rest of the exercise routines, et cetera, unsafe. So my childhood insomnia is back with a vengeance. And I'll often go days on zero minutes of sleep. I still don't fully understand why, though. Perhaps you and Dr. Walker can join forces again. And so it's so tricky. You see that we, we, we of course, as humans, when we're scared, we want to have something to hold on to. And when somebody gives you some type of like, if somebody just sounds authoritative and says this is how it works, you can feel like, okay, good, I have something to hold on to. This is something. But in reality, we're, we're no better off. We're still so scared of not sleeping. And we have really haven't understood anything. And you can see that Myra is still struggling. Uh, and there was a very similar one in, uh, here too. But anyways, uh, a lot of similar comments there. And um, it again shows that uh, I think sleep is best understood from a point of like, or, or, you know, sleep is, I think, best understood as just a natural biological process, just like thinking and breathing and it happens all by itself and and when we approach sleep we can, we can approach it like a succulent rather than a bonsai tree like a succulent you know you give it water once once in a while and then it takes care of itself right and bonsai tree we have to like cut and trim and fix and then they, but but if we approach sleep like a bonsai tree like it doesn't it, it becomes more it, it, it doesn't thrive if, if anything it becomes more and more of a struggle so, and this is what I think happens so much in this in the sleep optimizing space. So, I think, um, yeah, <laughs> treating sleep like a succulent, and also if you have a struggle sleeping, see that it is an emotional struggle. It's a spiritual struggle. That is what's going to lead us to where we want to be. So, that's my that's, those are my thoughts, my opinions. Um, I'm curious to hear yours. So let me know what you thought. And uh, yeah, I guess final note here is that when I first saw this. Um, it, it was one of those moments where you kind of like, if I had a hair, I'd pr probably want to pull my hair because you're like, this this uh, this episode was watched like 200,000 times and this is somebody with, with like more than a million subscribers. And and, and, and I'm like, are, is like, are we ever going to really make a dent? Like, is there any possibility for us to like really change culture and change how things are viewed and thought and like that when 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 there's these massive massive forces that 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 are are, are going in a, a different direction where you have like like i often talk about I, I love like i think you know the scientific method is extremely valuable to us humans but at the same token like uh so much of academia is, is not helpful to us because there's this continuous emphasis on like how sleep is important for this reason and that reason and of course that is because like in academia you have to survive right you have to get published you have to get funding and how are you going to do that if you say well the less you do about sleep the easier it happens and we actually not found anything that shows that short sleep or something causes any, any problems like right you know very very tricky so academia is pushing in like that direction media like uh, to a large degree, does exactly the same, right? They want clickbait type titles. They want our attention. Large, uh, you know, people with large followings on social media, they're doing sort of the same thing as media and academia does. And like, sometimes you're like, you know, are we ever going to really, really, you know, make a dent, you know, and like really start to change culture? Who knows? Anyways, I'm just happy that we're here, that you're here, and that uh, we're seeing a lot of magic happening in this community. So let's end on that note. Thanks for being here with me today. And as always, uh, let me know what your thoughts and uh, we shall go from there. Bye for now.